Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 15.6 beta 5. This is currently available to developers and hopefully by the time you're watching this video, it will be out to public beta testers as well. This came in at under 500 megabytes on all the devices here. So the iPhone 12 pro, the iPhone 10 and iPad mini. All of these devices were under 500 megabytes, so it's a pretty small install. This was released alongside iPadOS 15.6 Beta 5, WatchOS 8.7 Beta 5, tvOS 15.6 Beta 5, and macOS 12.5 Beta 5. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 19G5063A. With the A at the end, I expect this to be the last build before we get a release candidate. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. And as far as what's new, well, this update does not have a modem update in it. So there is no modem update going from beta four to beta five, like there was with beta three to beta four. We're still on version 2.70.01. Now there are a couple small changes in beta five. And the first one has to do with communication safety. If we go into our settings and then we go down to screen time, if you have a family tap on the family member at the bottom. And as you can see with beta four to beta five, there's a little dialogue here that now says improve communication safety. It says help Apple improve sensitive photo detection by sending diagnostic and usage data. Once you tap on improve communication safety, it explains more information about it. And of course you can turn this on or off and then we can share or don't share. And if we go to the next page, you'll see, we now have an option for it. And they've also changed some of the wording here as well. So not, not really any huge changes within communication safety, but there are some wording changes here. Also, Apple is expected to release the new MacBook air very soon. And they've actually updated the images for that MacBook air within 15.6 beta five. So we're expecting pre-orders of the MacBook air probably as soon as Friday with a final release the following Friday on the 15th. So that's typically what we expect with this. We'll have to wait and see that of course could change in July, but the MacBook air is expected soon. So Apple has updated not only images for MacBook air, but MacBook pro and the latest MacBook pro. You can see this in the find my app under devices and I don't have a MacBook air, but you can see the M one max here. The little icon for the MacBook pro has been updated just a little bit. And the same is true with the MacBook air. So all of that has been updated in the beta. Once you have a MacBook air, it will show instead of showing nothing or not having a correct image for it. Also, Apple has updated some changes in the code for the international calls. So once you receive an international call, there'll be some different wording changes where it will say international call, and then you can hand this off to different devices and it will tell you that it's an international call being handed off. You'll also have the option to report it as junk. So those are new things within this update. And also, if you didn't see my video last week with beta four, there's some small changes there with Safari and clearing history. So I did want to show you that quickly. If you go into your settings and then go down to Safari, tap on Safari, scroll to the bottom, tap on clear history and website data. If you choose to clear the history and data, you'll now get an option to close tabs or keep tabs. This was added with beta four and it's still in beta five. So that's a nice little change there. If you don't want to close everything, but just get rid of your history, you can do that. There's also some small wording changes within accessibility with braille and more this time around, but nothing huge other than that. Of course, there's some additional changes we'll see probably once it's released to the public, we'll know everything new in it. Now, as far as known and resolved issues, well, it hasn't changed much since beta four. There's no new resolved issues and there's no new known issues, but they've kept basically the same notes. If we go into the feedback app, you can see the latest notes and it tells the known issues, but there's no resolved issues for beta five. So they're the same thing as beta four, where it says known issue, the iOS device that initiates pairing, it needs to be logged into the same iCloud account as the home hub. Only the owner of a home, not an invalid user can pair matter accessories. And also the same is true with Xcode. It's the same as last week with Xcode 13. Point four is unable to prepare iOS 15.6 beta devices for development. It's telling you to use Xcode 13.3.1. So again, the same exact thing. As far as resolved issues. Now I've mentioned this in the past, but wanted to show you this. If maybe you're using a third party app such as Spotify and you want to re download Apple music, you can go into the app store, search for Apple music, tap on download. And prior to these updates, it would actually replace Spotify in the dock at the bottom. Now it's just downloading it and it's installed there in your app library. Or if you have it go to your home screen, it will do that. It will no longer replace your third party Apple music app within or your third party app, such as 
Spotify in your dock. So that's something that's been fixed. I talked about it before and it remains fixed in beta five and is probably something that will roll out with the final release as well. As far as any update with the storage issues, there really doesn't seem to be a ton of them. However, Apple does bury the storage issues down in the bottom as far as overall usage. So we'll give this a moment to load. You'll see that's the first time I've loaded it. It loaded very quickly. That's great. That's not really an issue anymore. And iOS data is taking up 8.35 gigabytes. System data is taking a while to load. So we'll give it just a moment. And it only took a few more seconds to load. You can see here 305 and it's 6.3 gigabytes. So it's not a huge amount. This will change over time. And Apple buries this down at the bottom for a reason. If it's over 20 gigabytes though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, but typically this will clear itself up and you can sometimes fix this by syncing it with iTunes or Find on a Mac. So try that if this is still an issue when the final version comes out, hopefully it clears all the cache. You can also try and delete the history in Safari. Sometimes that clears it up as well, but it should not be taking up a huge amount. As far as the iPhone overheating or getting too warm so far, it's been nice and cool the entire time installing the update going in and even checking Geekbench scores. It's not bad at all. It's nice and cool and it's not gotten warm at all. As far as future releases, iOS 15.5.1 is something I wouldn't count on anymore. People have been asking me about that and it looks like Apple's just going to wait for iOS 15.6. So 15.5.1, I wouldn't count on, looks like they don't need it. And then we'll have iOS 15.6 RC either later this week or sometime next week around Tuesday. Typically when Apple does that, we'll have a final release, maybe the following week. So if Apple does release, maybe the new MacBook Air on the 15th, we could have the update sometime next week to reflect the changes with that up that update and that release. So look for that as soon as next week. If we have an RC later this week, of course, I'll be sure to let you know. Also iOS 16 public beta and beta three are expected as soon as tomorrow. Many people think it'll be tomorrow or Thursday where we have a public beta. It's possible they could push it to the following week, but last year it was a little bit different where they released the public beta as public beta two, which matched beta two of iOS 16 or 15 at that time. And then they pushed iOS 15 beta three the following week where we had that match with the public beta as well. We'll have to wait and see what Apple does, but they could release this on the same day and we could have iOS 16 beta three and public beta as soon as tomorrow. Hopefully we have that as well. As far as any security updates, I would expect iOS 15.6 to have quite a few of them. Of course, we won't know about those until they're released to the public. And once 15.6 is out, we'll know what that is as Apple updates their website with it. And so that leads me to, should you install iOS 15.6? beta five. And at this point, if you have beta four, absolutely install it or any version of iOS 15.6. However, if you're trying to solve an issue with 15.5, I have seen some people have better battery life and overall experiences, even using the beta over the public version of 15.5. However, just make sure you have a backup. And if you do have issues, keep in mind, it is still a beta and report those issues in feedback. So make sure you do that. If you're having any issues with 15.6, as long as you have a backup and maybe a computer to roll back, then definitely you could try it out. I would hold off on iOS 16 betas until the public beta is out as it's quite buggy still. As far as overall battery life, most people say it gets them through a day without any issue. Of course, I'll talk more about that later this week when we have a follow up on the weekend, but battery life in general, show you battery health on this device. It was not my main device. It's at 100%. Some people have asked me to show my battery health on the iPhone 10. So I did use this for quite a while and you'll see it's at 88% on the iPhone 10. So definitely it will go down over time just with regular usage, but in general, it should get you through a day with 15.6. As far as overall performance, it's nice and fast on all devices here, whether that be an iPhone 10 or iPhone 12 pro or anything else, it seems to be perform really fast. Scrolling is nice and fast. If we go to the app library, whether it's ProMotion or not, it seems to be at the peak of performance of iOS 15, and it should be at this point. As far as overall benchmarks, I did run Geekbench 5 on this, and you'll see it scored 1,586 for single core, 3,971 for multi-core. Compared to what we had with previous betas, it's a little bit faster for single core and a little bit slower for multi-core. It's basically what you would expect. If it's within 100 or so, it should be just fine. And so it seems to be very close to a final version of iOS 15.6. No additional changes have really been found on iPad other than what I mentioned on iOS. So hopefully we'll have a release as soon as next week, possibly the week after that.
If you've found anything else though in iOS 15.6, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.